Fun way to get around town or a dangerous nuisance on wheels. Electric scooters are reshaping how we get around Southern California. This is Inside the Issues. Welcome to Inside the Issues, I'm Alex Cohen. Electric scooters are all the rage these days in cities all over the world. But this craze began right here in Southern California. Perhaps this is no surprise, seeing as our traffic is miserable, we have warm weather, not a whole lot of rain, there are plenty of sidewalks. But how did we get to this moment in time? Joining us now for the 101, our Cliff's Notes on e-scooters is Harry Campbell, who runs the website The Rideshare Guy. Thank you so much for coming in. Thanks for having me on, Alex. I feel like this is one of those trends that just, it literally happened overnight. It was like you closed your eyes, no e-scooters, and then they were everywhere or certainly in a lot of places when exactly and how exactly did this happen yeah i think it really is amazing when you look at just how fast these services have been adopted and i think i was at a little bit of an advantage having grown up in santa monica and went to santa monica high school and that's actually where bird uh, first launched their services and so i started spotting them on the streets in november of last year so almost about a year ago exactly and it was pretty quickly that it went from just a fad and a few people riding here and there to hundreds and then thousands and tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands and has really exploded since. But I'm going to assume that some of our viewers have not had the bird experience or the mm -hmm. Lyme experience just yet. So in layman's terms, sure. how does it work? How do you do it? Sure. So I like to think of it as sort of an, a, a razor scooter um, that you might have ridden when you were a kid, or at least when I was a kid, but uh, with electric power. Mm -hmm. And so they can go up to 15 miles per hour. They're unlocked with an, a, an app on your smartphone and they cost uh, $1 to get started and 15 cents a minute. So they're relatively cheap. And I think the, the big thing that stands out and that will, you'll, what you'll see from just the different variety of people riding them as young and old across races and genders everyone loves riding them there's just something about the form factor that I think makes it really fun to ride around and it also has a lot of you know positive uh, you know tra actual transportation purposes too to yeah. get you around the city and why why are people I mean I'm sure a lot of them are tourists who come yeah. into sunny Southern California and want to cruise around mm -hmm. but there are a lot of people using it for work yeah. and school as well Definitely. and that, so there are a few different use cases I mean I think in a place like Santa Monica tourists using them are huge I mean, you know, we've filmed videos and we've kind of covered what it's like to be a charger, the people that are actually charging the scooters. And, you know, you'll have people stopping you left and right. What are these? How do they work? And that's, you know, so tourists is one big use case. But you also have, you know, as a charger, someone who's charging these scooters every night, I'm dropping them off often in places. And I've seen people waiting for the scooters in the mornings to go take them to work. This is at 5, 6, 7 a.m. So people are legitimately using them for, you know, in addition to pleasure, they're also using them for their commutes. Uh, now, you say chargers. And again, yeah. this might be one of those things <laughs> people were, wait a minute, what are you talking about? Uh, I've also heard them referred to as bird hunters yeah. or lime juicers. Ha ha ha, yeah. very funny little play <laughs> on words. But explain how this works because these are scooters that rely on electric batteries yes. and after a while they will run out of charge. And this is a whole cottage industry yeah, that sprung definitely. up. Okay, so what do chargers do? Sure, so well the first thing, you're gonna have to get used to a lot of puns because these companies love puns. I love them, <laughs> yeah, keep going, lay them on. So the lime juicers, you yeah. know, the bird hunters, and you know, we'll talk about the next too, I'm sure, where the where the groups of scooters get um, put in the mornings. But basically, right, most consumers are actually riding these during the day, and towards the end of the day, when they're running out of batteries, or at, even at nighttime, basically an army of independent workers. So people, um, they call them chargers for bird, and they go out there. They're independent contractors. They go out. They use the app to find scooters that have run out of batteries, and they try to clear them all off the streets. Um, you know, throughout the night, they take them home to their apartment or their house, charge them. Um, you know, just like you would plug in your cell phone or your computer and then release them in the mornings from 4 to 7 a.m. so that all of the consumers can go out and ride them again and that kind of cycle just continues it's interesting though because it all happens behind the scenes yeah um, you know whereas in other gig economy you know where uber or lyft or postmates or doordash someone hands you your food or picks you up and you know takes you there but uh, th this business is unique because everyone's behind the scenes that's working as an independent contractor and, and we should note that they're not just doing this out of the goodwill of their hearts <laughs> there is money to be made yeah, how much definitely. do you make for charging a bunch of scooters so overnight. Bird pays $5 to $20 per scooter that you fill up and you basically pick up, charge, and drop off. It depends on how difficult it is to find. You know, 
know, some people leave them in apartment buildings or, you know, in hard to place find, uh, hard places to find it on the It sounds like Pokemon <laughs> Go. Is, is it almost it's actually, like it's that where it's like, I gotta hunt for that aspect. one. Yeah. yeah, no, I think a lot of uh, chargers like that. I've seen a lot of um, father and son or father, daughter, you know, type uh, tandem duos, you know, go out there, couples that are going out there. And so there is, you know, I think there's that aspect because a lot of the scooters get released at 9 p.m. And so there's a bit of a competitive nature. So it's a nature. date night activity too. It's <laughs> fascinating this world. Yeah, I think it's it, a whole really, it really, it's definitely a whole subculture. I mean, we've got a Facebook group with thousands of members and over 10,000 chargers are on our email list, you know, that are subscribing to get information on what it's like. I mean, right now it's a lot of, it's new, right? So a yeah. lot of people are, you know, really trying to get into it, learn about it, see just the question that you just asked, how much money can they make? And, you know, it's definitely, I would say the more hustle you have, the more money you can make, but it is a unique work opportunity, that's for sure. Uh, it's certainly providing income for some folks out there, but there yeah. are a lot of people who are very critical mm -hmm. of e-scooters. There are concerns that they're just, they wind up in the middle of the sidewalk yeah. and they could get tripped over, that people are going too fast. You mentioned some of the rules, but it's different. There's kind of a patchwork of rules based on, on your location and there's local rules yeah. and statewide rules. Can you talk us through that? Sure. So I think really it is kind of a patchwork of regulations right now. And frankly, this is what we saw with Uber and Lyft. When these companies yeah. first launched, they there wasn't anywhere to regulate them. I mean, even the regulators, the CPUC, the California Public Utilities Commission, you know, no one wants to take on billion dollar companies. <laughs> the scooter companies are already billion dollar companies and it's a lot of work and a lot of manpower and a lot of money, a lot of resources that are needed to regulate these companies in not only an effective, but also a smart way. And and I think that's similar what we're seeing with a lot of these scooters is that there are certain rules, but as you, you know, you're not supposed to ride on sidewalks, you're not supposed to ride if you're under the age of 18, um, you know, things like that. But as you might imagine, a lot of that, if you just look out onto the streets, you see a lot of people riding on the sidewalks and there are some riding in places, you know, like the Third Street Promenade or busy areas is places like Bird have actually geofenced certain areas that you can't ride the scooters or it's slow. And explain down. what that means, geofence. Yeah, so, it reminds me of the shopping carts that kind of lock up when you go too far from yeah, the parking it's, lot. That's a perfect analogy and it's just like that, but kind of using technology, yeah. right? And so if you go into an area where you're not supposed to be riding, then it'll either slow down the speed or prevent you from riding. And so, you know, I think some of these technological innovations, you know, I think are doing some to curb, but I mean, at the end of the day, I think what we've really seen with scooters, I mean, no one thought these things were going to be as popular as they are a year ago. <laughs> yeah, and it's, oh, okay, and I think that's at the heart of all of this, yeah. right? Why, it seems like almost a perfect storm of things, in your opinion, as the rideshare guy. Mm -hmm. Why have these been so successful? Well, I mean, I definitely don't think I could have predicted it. Otherwise, maybe I would be have Invested. started a scooter company <laughs> yeah. of my own. But I think one thing we've seen is just that they're really, they're, there's something about them that I think really resonates instantly with people. I mean, I call it sort of the fun factor. Mm -hmm. But in addition to the fun factor, they're also more reliable, they're cheaper, and they're, you know, honestly faster than other transportation alternatives. So if you're going to drive a car, you have to think about, you know, where you're going to park your car, how much it's going to cost you. If you call for an Uber or Lyft, you have to wait for the driver, someone like me to get lost, you know, circling around the block trying to find you. With a scooter, you know, in sort of an optimal situation, you walk outside of a meeting, you walk outside of your house, and you know, in places like Santa Monica where there's thousands, there's a scooter right there on the edge of your block, hopefully parked in a neat way. You pick it up, you go to your destination, and you can leave it anywhere. And that's going to be faster, cheaper, and more reliable than almost any other transportation alternative if sort of all the stars align in, in the right ways. Harry Campbell, the rideshare guy, thank you for giving us the 101 on e-scooters. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me.